I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we return to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're going to talk about how to use a for next loop, uh, which is one of the most handy loops, in my opinion, and I probably use it more than the other ones um, after years and years of coding. Not that it's better in any way, it's just uh, I find that there's more context where you use it. And so, uh, without further ado, let's get to our four next loops in Microsoft Access. Need help with coaching on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon, the link is in the description. Okay, to start this uh, discussion, I'm using the same file we've been using for our other uh, topics, and uh, you've seen it before. I've put a filter in on my on my list there because there are quite a few objects in this uh, database now. And if I go to create and then module, um, you'll see that it gives me a brand new module. And I'm just going to save this with with uh, Control S, uh, and I'm just going to put for next uh, module on the name. It doesn't really matter what the name is uh, for this one right now. And uh, so now uh, what we can do is we can demonstrate kind of, uh, we'll do a sub and we'll demonstrate how to, how to use a for next loop uh, in, I'm gonna demonstrate it in several contexts so that you'll get an idea of, of how this particular loop is used and why it is, uh, it's very, very handy, it's very flexible. And so to get started, I'll, uh, I'll create a variable here and I'll just call it uh, uh, int item uh, for an integer and uh, we'll use this I, we'll use this variable throughout our, our little procedure here and uh, the first examples are going to be very simple. Um, so I'll just just to show you how, uh, how for next works. So generally what we'll do is we'll say for and then we'll put our variable in is equal to, you know, uh, some range. In this case, we'll say zero to ten, and uh, and we'll say, uh, you know, this is where you would do some code in between. You do something with that, you know, whatever that represents. In this case, it's just a number. So I'll just say debug dot print the item is, and then the number that we are currently at in our loop. And so this is the very you know the most simple way you can see for next and uh, it's going to increment or it's going to go to the next item each time uh, so we don't have to like the other loops if we have a counter or something we don't have to we do not have to increment it so if I hit go on the toolbar there and uh, you can see it went from 0 to 10 uh, which is actually 11 items so if you went 1 to 10 you'd get 1 through 10 so I'll, I'll delete all of that output and I'll rerun it so that you can see um, you can see 1 to 10 um, the item is 1 to 10 and that is sort of how the for next loop works so we say in our in the actual specification of of the uh, for part of the loop we say uh, you know whatever it is that we're going to increment so we could actually say for uh, item is 10 to 1 and then you can say step minus one. You can also say step minus two. If you want to uh, increment by twos or ones or whatever, you can do that uh, using, using that. And also make a special note that the step minus one is very handy when you're, when you're iterating over collections. And, and the reason for that is that um, if you're deleting, say, things from a collection, sometimes you can't go forward through the collection you have to go from the end and come backwards so that if you delete something it doesn't delete the one that you're on it deletes it and then moves to the next one uh, without sort of this the stack moving i guess you'd call it and so uh, collections is very very handy to use step minus one because you always uh, iterate backwards through those especially if you're using deletes so in this case, uh, so I'm going to um, change it a bit. I, I'm going to add um, uh, an argument saying what's the maximum integer, you know, that I want to that I want to do here. So in this case, we're we're iterating backwards through it, so it's going to stop at this number that we put in there. So we're going to come down to our maximum value, um, and so this is where you can use exit four, and so 
uh, you can say if if the item is equal to whatever you know you want whatever condition then you can use exit four to jump out of your loop so in this case um, I'll say stop at seven and so uh, you'll see that it started going through the four next and then when it hit the one that say we wanted or was the maximum or, or the limit or whatever um, then you can use this exit four and you can jump out of it. And that's very very handy because a lot of times especially if you're using arrays or really big arrays and things like that what you want to do is uh, you know how many things you have to loop through or, or even controls you can be looping through all the controls on a form um, sometimes you, when you hit the one you want, you want to exit out of the uh, out of the four next because it's going to save time. Uh, so because it just won't evaluate the rest of the you know the rest of the uh, items in the loop because you hit the one you want and you don't want to waste time evaluating the rest of the ones that don't match. So so that's that's a very very uh, handy way of using it. So in the next uh, example here, I'm going to go a little more advanced and I'm going to create an array. And I'm going to create this uh, records array, and I'm going to get data out of the database uh, that, I, that I can show you here, this table, this candy table. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get a record set. Instead of getting a record set, uh, DAO record set or something like that, we're going to extract the data from the table directly into an array, uh, which is, you know, uh, when you start doing more advanced applications that have very complex contexts like manufacturing and things like that, sometimes you need to have really fast lookups, which I'm going to do in another video another day. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but in this case, we're going we're gonna to basically grab that data. We're going to put it into our, our um, AR records array, which is just a variant when we create the, the variable and it's going to become an array um, and I'm going to use a custom function that I'll show at the end of this video but um, just for now you can you can see this records array I'm just gonna say hey give me the data from that table according to my query just put it into an array so now I have an array and um, and so in order to go through this array I'm going to use for next and that's where it's going to become very handy um, so um, now a note up above, I put uh, use long if you have many rows, because if you have anything longer, than, bigger than 32,000, I think it's 700 something records, which is the top end of our, our integer, then you need to use a long integer. Uh, but in this case, we just have a few records. So I'm going to create the items variable, and I'm going to load that with the top uh, of the uh, so I'm going to use U bound, which is the upper bound, and it's a two-dimensional array. Um, so in this case, uh, it's two dimensions, and I'll just show you here. The first dimension is the columns. So I'm I'm just going to debug dot print the items, and I'll get rid of that old stuff out of there um, from our just for demonstration. And I'll hit go, and now you can see now I've got uh, I can see there's four columns in the array. And if I switch it to dimension two, dimension two, then um, this will have something like eleven or twelve or something. Oops, that's the wrong one. Got to put the cursor in there to hit go. Okay, so there you go. So if I hit go, uh, you can see this has twelve records with four columns. And uh, so now what we can do is we can use for next to loop through the array to do stuff with the items that are in the array and so that makes it very very handy and so what we what we've got is an array of variants um, and so uh, the the elements in the array can be uh, you know text or string or pardon me text or integers or whatever so we're going to do our for next loop we're going to go for int item to int items um, int item equals zero because it's zero base and we're going to go to int items. Now, if you're using, uh, this was uh, corrected a long time ago. Um, you used to have to say int items minus one uh, for when you're using the two part of the four, uh, for int items equals zero two. 
Um, so keep a note of that. Sometimes you might have to put uh, int items minus one because it'll go over. But in this case, uh, you can see that the uh, uh, it's looped through the record set, and uh, and so it's gone all the way through. And I think the first column was like candy type. Um, so if I want to grab more data from my array there, I can. I can say, you know, I'll put a comma in between and grab the second column. And you can see that we're using the int item on each on each uh, time through. So and that's incrementing each time. So that's why we put that in for the row argument. And so here you can see um, it's gone through, grabbed all the data in the, in the record set, and um, and it did go. And actually, you can see the last, the very last row there was empty. It had a comma, um, and so we probably should have said int items minus one on that one. But you kind of get the idea. So just be aware that in some cases you do need to say minus one on the end, and some you don't have to. Um, so for those of you who are interested, um, I'll grab the module, or I should say the function that I used. I just uh, pasted it into another module, which was available in our when we were creating our module. Um, so you can call this function. This is just a, a function I use sometimes um, that I created to pull data out into uh, an array instead of a, a record set when when a speed is uh, high priority and or if there's like big you know bottlenecks in disk or network or something so that is how you can use uh, four next loops in Microsoft Access hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use four next loops in Microsoft Access if you like what you saw today please give the video a thumbs up make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet click the bell when you see the bell and if you have any questions or comments you can put those in the comment section below have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.